Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Okay, here we go. Amity of Fact Check blog, November 2022. I got some of the bros with me to the topic of today's discussion is Farid responds, rinsing Ruzzi uh, versus Ruzzi, whatever you want to call it. Uh, gotcha. Um, and he did a really good job. Um, he, he he really found found some things about Mirza Glam Ahmed that were uh, objectionable. Um, and uh, Farid is a good brother. Uh, I've re actually just recently met him. And um, yeah, he's an amazing brother, you know, um, just like all the brothers that we, we've met, like uh, a Razak, you know, uh, there's so many brothers we came across, uh, Bro Haji. I've worked with uh, uh, Bro Haji on, on a bunch of things. Um, uh, Abdul Samad on Twitter. Um, Brother Amir is also here. Brother Uslan is here. Um, do you guys want to say anything before I start? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I think you do have Jumma to catch, so uh, yeah, and you can uh, we'll, start. Be done, we'll, we'll be done in no time. We'll, we'll, we'll be done in no. This is just an okay, interactive okay. video for our, for our friends Ruzzy, and I got love for the guy. I got love for Ruzzy, Huram, all these guys. They're they're victims of being brainwashed, of um, systemic brainwashing. You know, so they've never used logic. They've never used. Um, uh, that they've never, I mean, they, their biases are so much be, because of the brainwashing that, you know, we feel sorry for them. You know what I mean? And we know ruzzy has got some medical issues. We all know that. Something's wrong with this guy, you know? Um, and he's cussed at us. He's called, um, he called uh, a Razak, a Yemenite front, uh, a dirty Arab, if you need to see that. Um, <clears throat> he kisses the Khalifa's hand, you know, uh, and uh, did you know he's about to graduate from Jamia, uh, Brother Amer? Uh, I think you mentioned it before. Yeah, he's about yeah. to graduate. And um, and he gets paid to do this. Let's remember that. Ruzzy gets paid every day. They pay his rent. They buy him food, his clothing. If he gets married, they'll pay for his wedding. Um, they pay for him to travel. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And he gets uh, a walk around money. We we used to call it wham. If you ever had wham, walk around money. Um, so that's what this is. Um, gotcha. And um, Fareed really went and got him. And okay, let me show some some other photos that I have of the guy. Here's here's another one. Uh, and then here's you know you can just tell just by looking at this guy's eyes, something ain't right. Um, so okay, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk about this in just a sec. So. Um, <clears throat> Ruzzy is mad and all these guys are mad because I created this blog six years ago uh, and I also did a doctorate at the same time. So, uh, and I also worked and I also did all these things. It's just a, little, a minor, small hobby. It takes up just a few hours of my day. And I started to collect the arguments and uh, post um, refutations. I've written like the history of Amadeus in over uh, almost 100 countries. You know, because we're, we're we're tracking um, the amount of amnesties in the world. We, as we know, these guys lie all, all the time, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so, so let's talk about um, the issue here. And I'm going to share the screen. Let me take that off. Um, okay, um, share screen. Here we go. And okay, here's the essay. So, so here's what they taught. Here's the issue. Fareed, brother Fareed made about 29 videos about the proofs of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, his prophethood. So Ruzzi saw that and he couldn't let it go. So um, this is where I say in the West, Amdis are going after Muslims. Amdis are, 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 are in it with a very condescending attitude going after people. Whereas in Pakistan, they're doing it too. And then uh, claiming persecution and getting asylum. And that's not right. If you're going after people in this manner, and uh, the fearing them and accusing them of blasphemy. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what do you expect? W what do you think is going to happen? You know, in, in in Pakistan, there's Sunnis and Shia. They don't debate. They don't discuss because because it, it's not going to turn out right. Uh, so, OK, so here's what it was. And the whole thing started uh, up again because of um, Farid started a GoFundMe to get Moldi um, Sanaullah's book, Tariqi Mirza, um, translated in, in, into English. Now. The Ali Hadith are, are a little bit different than the Salafi of the Arabian Peninsula. And I haven't been able to figure out exactly what the differences are, but they're not the same. 
Um, there are some differences. Uh, um, nor do they work together. The um, the Ali Hadith uh, ulama of India. The, I mean, I'm sure now they might have a relationship now, but they're not like Ruzi thinks. Ruzi thinks everyone has a Halifa. Is that funny? <laughs> he thinks everyone has a Halifa. Everyone has one leader, and whatever the one leader says, everyone just does. <clears throat> that's what what, what Ruzi thinks, and that's simply not the case in Islam. Um, so okay. So as the video starts, okay. So what happened was. <laughs> Al Mujahil, <laughs> who called me a 40 year old bastard once on a live stream, um, he tells Fareed, hey, let's have a discussion. He baits Fareed, saying, yeah, I might, I might have a friend with me. So Fareed goes, and the, the, who's the friend? Razi. So Fareed's like, this is deception. Why didn't you tell me? Right? So I think he left and then he came back. Um, and then he starts talking to, to um, Razi. And Razi is so aggressive, so condescending, so rude. It's like, bro, if you, if you talk like this to someone in public, there's going to be a fight. Why are you talking like this? You know, learn how to speak. And I, I've said this about Amdi's all the time. The biggest issue with an Amdi is he's a coward and he doesn't know how to speak. Right. So so if you're like a real man, you, you don't talk to people like that unless you want to fight. Right. If you want to fight, that's how you talk to. Them. You see what I mean? But if you want to have an intelligent discussion, that's not the tone. That's not it. Um <clears throat> So Ruzi starts to call um, Fareed scared. Ruzi, Huram is literally scared of me. Literally, as if I'm going to do something. I got too much to lose. You know, Azariyev is literally scared of me. I live down the street, about a few miles away. Invite me. I'll come alone. Y'all can have 50 people. It don't matter. Um, so Mujahid too, another coward. All these guys are cowards. You know what I mean? And so uh, Andrew Tate says <clears throat> we should be worried about weak men about men who are cowards because men who are cowards don't do things straight they do things in a diabolical way you know like Ruzi, um like Huram. they're not being straight because they don't have the ability to be straight um so okay <clears throat> Ruzi's running his mouth right um so, so then at like the seven minute mark of Ruzi's video Fareed, Fareed is back um, Fareed um, brings up MGA's lack of referencing. Now, Fareed didn't bring up. Uh, MGA said that um, there's a Sahih um, Hadith in, in Bukhari that the Messiah will be the Majad of the 14th century. Doesn't exist. And Fareed didn't get to that. Uh, <laughs> Fareed is on some other topics. And in every topic, you'll find the same thing. Uh, academic dishonesty. Total dishonesty. They don't even care, bro. They don't even care if it's true, bro. This was 120 years ago. Who was going to double check? Who's going to go and look up the references? They didn't even have computers to look up references. Um, you would literally have to go to a scholar or, or to a library, and that could take time. That could take days, weeks, months. Um, so they were just saying whatever. And the British government allowed MGA's books, so, so there it is. Um, MGA, yeah, he never gave proper references, and he wasted books. In fact, in um, uh, Brother Amir, um, have you read um, Brahini Ahmadiyya 1 and 2 yet? Brother, I didn't get time, right? Because uh, I will this weekend. Yeah, no worries. Uh, uh, look at the font <laughs> in Brian the 1 and 2. This guy used like font 25 because it was like, it's literally like 10 pages. But to make it 50 or to make it like 40, if you use bigger font, you can make it longer. So so that's what this guy is up to. Um, um, okay, so then... Uh, uh, Ruzi says, no, uh, all the witnesses. So Fareed is talking about the Hindu witness. So MGA says in um, Brahini Ahmadiyya, he gets a revelation. It's true. Who's the witness? Some Hindu guy who lives in, 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 in Qadian, it seems. And, and he's part of the Arya Samaj, who MGA doesn't like. He's your witness? Where did he go? Did he convert to Ahmadiyya? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, he's your witness, a guy that didn't even convert. He didn't even believe in you. Um, so, um, Ruzi says, well, no, all the witnesses are listed in Nazul Masi, but Ruzi doesn't say that's 1909. That's after MGA died. It's a rework, you know, same thing with the eclipses at first MGA said, oh, this has never happened before. Cause, cause that's what the alleged Hadith says. It never happened before, but then MGA found out it happens every 11 years or every 22 years or something like that. So in, in, in later books, he reworked it and said, no, um, uh, it, it does happen a lot, 
but no one has claimed to be the Mehdi <laughs> while it happened. And it's like, well, that's not true either because we, we, we looked it up and we found uh, other claimants. So everything these guys say is a lie, man, you know, and it's, it's out of control how they just keep doing it. Can I say something, brother? Sure. So you know how the uh, the prophets, uh, uh, the previous prophets, you know, all the prophets that came, they've never went back and said, oh, no, I said this wrong. Now this is this is what it means. Like, how can one person go back and change a claim if they're the prophet, right? Right. Like, no Islamic prophet has done that where they're like, oh, no, I didn't mean that. It means this. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's crazy. You can't, you can't be making a claim and then changing it five years or ten years down the road. Oh, no, this is not what it means. It means that I was wrong. You know what I mean? It's like saying when he... First of all, MGA believed that Isa al Islam was dead at the beginning, right? But down the road, he said he's dead. How did he come to that conclusion? You know, right? And and, and you know the uh, so what you're talking about is MGA's flip flopping. He did that on everything too. Remember about the Madhi, he said all the Hadiths are wrong. That's the for Allah, right? Uh, he said the only one that's right is uh, La Madhi fi Isa. I think no Madhi except Isa, right? Um, he said, he said, that's the only one that's true. But, but then all of a sudden he says, okay, uh, the eclipses are true also. <laughs> like what, you know, and, uh, there are other hadiths that, that say when the prophet's son, um, Ibrahim was born, uh, um, and, and then he died like a year later or like two years later and he died, there was an eclipse. The prophet said straight up, eclipse doesn't prove anything. It doesn't, not a sign from nothing. So knock it off. Right. And, um, have you read about the splitting of the moon miracle, brother? Uh, I haven't gone into that part yet. Are you talking about the Ahmadi version or are you talking about the Islamic version? Well, the Islamic version, we believe the moon split. We don't know how, but we yes, believe. Yes, uh, because it's a story which I did listen to. It's a, it's by Mufti Make. I actually listened to it. Uh, they're asking for signs, uh, the Quraysh people. Um, and I don't know exactly, so I'm not going to quote it, but... Um, I did listen to it that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did split the moon with his fingers. Like, it was yeah. a, yeah. So MGA says uh, it was a lunar eclipse instead. <laughs> okay, but but it's scientific. Like, if you read articles online about the moon being split, scientists say, do, does say that there is a crack in the moon. So how can it be a lunar eclipse? Yeah. The moon well, doesn't crack on an eclipse. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. In fact, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed did some blasphemy, and he said, for, for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, astaghfirullah, the moon only split once. He says, for me, it happened twice. And he's talking about the double eclipse in Ramadan. <laughs> That's a false story to begin with. But he went there, bro. He took it there and said that. So, so, uh, so wait, wait, wait. He's saying that at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the moon did not split. He did not split the moon. Uh, it was a, 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 a uh, it was an eclipse, right? That's what he said. Yeah. Like he split the moon himself twice. Yeah. No. 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 So but he he says for himself there were two eclipses, not just one. And maybe you, you don't know about the Amity story of the eclipses. Sounds like it. I will read on it through your blog, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so did uh, there were uh, a double? So l let me just explain it real, real quick. Um, a Shia book, <laughs> which we don't accept, um, says during the time of the Mahdi, something will happen on Earth that's never happened before: a double eclipse during Ramadan, during the first few days, and the and I think the fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, right? And actually, they're right. That's never happened before. Um, in Ramadan, there are eclipses that happen. But never in those days, you know what I mean? I, I I can't remember the exact days, right? So it didn't even happen the way the Hadith said. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said it, it happened a different way, right? So um, same thing with the uh, Ibn Arabi and the Chinese thing. He twisted it, and he was hoping no one would double-check because who's double-checking in 1894? You know what I mean? Who's double-checking all the sources? you got to be a scholar. The layman's aren't. You know, the layman's will be like, they'll just join something, and then... How do you double check? So, anyway, uh, um, let me get back to. Uh, yeah, sorry, brother. I, I sorry we went off uh, track. Sorry about that. No, 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 no. Totally okay. So, okay. 
Okay, so then Ruzzi, he says, uh, some miracles are only for Muslims. Oh, of course, he says, the, the miracle of multiplying of food. Okay, so here's the issue. Did Mirza Ghulam Ahmed agree with this? He didn't. Show me. So why is Ruzzi agreeing that um, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was able to multiply food? His scholars don't even believe that. Show us where it says Amlis believe in this miracle. It's not true. I've never seen it. You know, feel free to correct me. I'm so look. I'm always willing to say I made a mistake, always. Um, so show me here. And, and so he he so he's talking about it. And he doesn't bring up MGA at all. Um, it is mentioned in the life of Ahmed by Dard, 1947. But who's he referring to? You know, he can't make it up. He was a Qadiani um, Murabi. Actually, it's pronounced darad, like pain. You know. Um, so show us where your Amdi Hulafa have said it. I, I want to see, you know, but he won't. He won't. So then he talks about the, the miracle of the splitting of the moon, and he doesn't mention the blasphemy of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said, for me, it happened twice. For, for, uh, for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, astaghfirullah, it only happened once. Who says things like this, bro? Razi and Huram and Zaria, they will. You know, we won't. Um, and, and look, I got it all right there. And, and if you need the ref, just click on it. It pop, pops right up. Okay. Ruzzi then argues miracles are for believers. Uh, but <laughs> there were no Amdis at this time. MJ didn't even really have any followers at, at uh, the time of Brahini Amdi. I think he had a few. But they weren't there in Qadian or, or you know, his toilet cleaner. Uh, you know he had a toilet maid who would clean up, help him clean up, clean himself in the toilet. Because uh, his right arm was broken. How funny is that, bro? Uh, imagine that there's a dude who's wiping you every time because you can't do it. Yeah, I don't want to know about that. Bro, you, 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 got a dude, you got a dude in the bathroom with you, bro? You know, and this dude finds finds blood all over your legs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they uh, they claim the miracle of the red drops. Have you heard of the miracle of the red drops? Uh, MGA no. said in, in no, 1884. So he says he's he's lying in his bathroom on the floor because it's hot <laughs> on the plaster. Him and his toilet guy, Sonori, and uh, his his toilet attendant is touching his legs. He goes, Mirza Saab, you have blood. <laughs> you have blood around your private parts, around your stomach and your private parts. Um, what is this? Where did it come from? So uh, uh, later on, MGA says, no, I was having a vision. And God shook his pen and ink fell from heaven, and it landed on me in Kadian. What? what? <laughs> exactly. What? What are you talking about, bro? Right? So this was before he denied all miracles and etc. He was claiming this one for himself. It's the weirdest thing. Okay, so anyways. Then uh, uh, Ruzzi brings up uh, 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 the, uh, the cave, the miracle of the cave. And then he accuses Fareed of not believing in it. How, what? Fareed does believe in it. You know, um, he twisted Fareed's words, which is what he does with everyone. You know, they twist my words on everything I say, you know, and then they say that, uh, they're not watching me. These guys are watching me, bro. Um, they got eyes on me, bro. Hey, okay, if so, any MDs are watching us, yo, I, I really hope, uh, you know, you guys straighten up, you know. Come to the true Islam, brothers and sisters. Yeah, and uh, and honestly, you got to watch out for the Amdi women, bro. They'll get you. You know, in fact, in Canada, Amdi women have converted more people to Ahmadiyya than any of the Murabis. In like brother, the ain't no, bro, ain't no woman getting me, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, some some Muslims don't know, you know, and they'll fall in love with a woman emotionally, and then they find out at the end she's an Amdi. Or Kadiani, so so they're like shook, you know what I mean? So okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, no thanks, brother. <laughs> no, I'm hey, the other way. <laughs> do, uh, uh, do you see my video <laughs> where there's a a, a, a Vietnamese convert to Amadia Vu, and then he slips up. He says, "Yeah, I converted to Amadia to appease my girlfriend's family." <laughs> right, and bro, dude. Oh, okay. Let me say one more thing. Uh, so I posted uh, one of those clips. With Farid uh, talking to, to um, Ruzzi on TikTok, Hella Amdi's reported me. They've removed it, saying it's bullying. How is that bullying? You know, but 
it, it just goes to show how their troll team is watching. They're trying to shut down all my accounts across many uh, um, um, platforms. Whatever, y'all can't stop me, you know. And and, and y'all can't and, stop me either. Can't and, and and look what they don't understand is I've already won. The blog is is at almost 1.8 million views. Okay, I've already c- completed everything. I'm like 10 years ahead. All right. So um, okay. So anyways, back to the the miracle of the cave. Ruzzy doesn't quote MGA. Did MGA call it a miracle? If so, where and when? Did the Hulafa call it a miracle? Tell us. What did MGA say about um, chapter 9, verse 40? Why did he, um, uh, Brother Amir, are you familiar with uh, chapter 9, uh, verse 40, in terms of the cave? Uh, it's, it's the, can you remind me again? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a verse of the Quran that MGA says was revealed to him. So, you know, there's over 40 verses of the Quran that MGA says were re-revealed to him. What chapter, right? what chapter was it? Chapter 9, verse 40. It's, it's, it's Toba. Oh, Surah Toba. Yeah, so in, in, in the, verse the 40. One, the, the Surah that starts with the Bismillah, right? Right, right, right. Okay. So, uh, verse 40 has a sentence in there. Uh, Lassalah bin Kaf bin Abduhu, I think. I don't remember. But... Uh, I'm with you, or, or I don't remember off the top of my head. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed also claims to have gotten this as a re- as a re-revelation. So remember, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed says the Quran left Earth in 1857, and he brought it back. So remember that. So How does in, the Quran leave when we have copies of the Quran on, uh, on Earth? Yeah, on well, this, this, this is what he says. And he said it because Muslims killed the British in 1857 brutally um because the british had a new weapon you had to bite into a packet of pig fat beef fat to lubricate the weapon or lubricate the bullets or something like that it's the it's the case of the enfield rifle but it had better range than the than the guns before that so muslims and hindus rebelled and killed hella uh british soldiers it was the worst defeat in british history since america since they lost america so Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, based on that, says Islam left the earth. <laughs> and then he says, I'm bringing it back. This is what MGA is saying. So there, there's a lot of, you know, uh, there's that verse of the Quran where it says, um, Muhammad sallallahu wasallam is a mercy upon mankind. That's a famous verse, right? Yes. That's another one. MGA says was revealed about him and to him. There's another verse in um, Surah Qasr. Um, we all know Surah Qasr, right? Yeah. MGA says, uh, I think it's the first verse, says that verse was revealed about him. I and think the it, most famous verse that they claim is Surah Jummah. That one, yeah. that one Six, verse. Two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so anyhow, um, Ruzzi, just like MGA, doesn't give uh, the proper references. He denies the pigeon and the spider because um, Fareed was asking him about it. Um, and then I don't know how Ruzzy came up with Fareed denied the miracle. I don't know where that comes from. Okay. Um, Fareed then says that uh, he never went to a coffer and showed a sign the way MGA did. Right? MGA says he shows a sign to a coffer who doesn't even convert. Okay? And so Fareed says these are very low standards for a miracle. Um and then Ruzzy, immediately, Ruzzy, oh, I want to talk about Isa last slump. <laughs> Every time Ruzzy got stuck, he immediately went to Isa last slump. Immediately. Um, a textbook, classic deflection. Couldn't be more classic. Um, and and <laughs> uh, so, okay. Then um, Fareed says, well, let's talk about MGA claiming to be Chinese. <laughs> right? right? Apparently, Ruzzy, he made a video, uh, Proofs of Prophethood, and it's one of, one of the videos he says that. So then all of a sudden, Ruzzi, say, Ruzzi says, Sayyid Muhammad Hussain Batalavi is your majaddid. No, he's not. Again, it doesn't seem that the Salafi scholars of Saudi Arabia and Bahrain have like an, a huge connection with the Ali Hadith of North India. They, I, we, there's no real connection that I found um, in terms of scholarly work, in terms of, of course, the government of Pakistan, 
and the government of Saudi Arabia work together for oil. I think Saudi sells Pakistan oil, you know? Um, so, okay. And then all of a sudden he uh, deflects to the, to the, to the, uh, to the, to the death of Esau last long. Again, classic. And he, he keeps on saying, um, he, he, he keeps connecting Ali Hadith with, with the Wahhabis. And Farid's like, I don't even know these guys. How would I know the guys in India? I can't even read their books, you know, because in uh, Bahrain, in the Arab world, they don't read Urdu. They read Arabic. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, Farid brings him back. Uh, uh, Razi then, he uh, he makes the allegation that, that Persians are also considered Chinese. And then he says, um, the, the, uh, the, he says, Iran extended into China, which is a lie. That's not true. Um, once the Safavids came into power, uh, they were so different than everyone else, they couldn't even be friends with anyone else. So knock that off, bro. And the, the, the Muslims in China were not Shia. Uh, I think in, uh, in Beijing, there's like a few, few Muslims left in China. Um, probably even a million, just because in China, there's like a, two billion people. So, okay. <clears throat> Why did Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claim to be Chinese? He's quoting uh, a known kafir. Ibn Arabi is a known kafir in, in the Muslim world. Known. Uh, go and check out Bro Haji's video. Um, Imam Ghazali called him kafir. Pretty much. Pretty close to it. M might as well. So MGA quoted him. Now, now why did the Muslims of, of North India quote Ibn Arabi? Because he was a Sufi. So it was maybe the Sufi side of him that they might have quoted, which I wouldn't quote anything, especially after I've seen the other things that he wrote. Um, but, you know, people make make mistakes, too. You know, uh, Ruzzi said, why did so-and-so write uh, Rahmullah, right, uh, uh, after someone's name? Well, well, maybe someone else did did the typing and accidentally wrote it. We don't know. We don't know when this book was. We don't have the original um, to know if that's there. So, so Okay. All of a sudden, so Mirza Ghulam Ahmed comes out as Persian. When he first came out, he said he's Persian, straight up, this, that, etc. He's Persian, whatever. Um, which the Mughals, I don't even see how they're Persian. because So a Persia is not really Central Asia. Central Asia is different. You know, and Persia is Iran and Azerbaijan. Um, per, and, and Persia could, could even be half of Iraq. Right. And I think it stops at, at, at um, Balochistan and those are different people. But like Persians are not Central Asians. You know, a modern day Soviet Union, um, they speak a different language. Um, Persians are not Afghani. Persians are not Pathan. It's an entirely different thing. And, you know, uh, back then, um, it's, not, it's not like now. Everyone's the same now because we're all connected. We all act the same and whatever. But back then, everyone was isolated. So. He was making up. He was making it up. So then in, in 1897, 1898, he says that some of his ancestors lived in Chinese lands. And he quotes Ibn Arabi. So he's lying. He's lying. Then in, in 1903, he said it again. I, I don't have that here. But uh, and then in, in, in Hakikat al Wahi, apparently he says his ancestors lived in China. Same old thing. And he mentions Mongol. You know, it really, bro, they're Mongol. Um, the Mongols overran China. You know, not the Chinese overrunning the Mongols. So um, Freed says, did, uh, Freed asked Ruzzi, did MGA ever say that Persian equals Chinese? And then Ruzzi's like, yeah, he kind of did. Well, no, no, he didn't. That's not true. Um, and then Freed's like, it's different, bro. They're different. Just admit to it. Well, what's, the, what's the big issue? And then Ruzzi totally deflects to Salman Farsi, chapter 62, verse 3. Total deflection. Um and Runny, uh, Runny, Ruzzy is in total run mode. He is squeamish. He can't take it because he can't, he's never had this discussion, live discussion. So he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Um, Fareed then says, Ibn Arabi's a coffer, bro. You know, sorry. Why are you quoting a coffer? Um, and then that's basically the story. Uh, Ruzzy says, why do you guys believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is dead? And Isa hasn't died yet. This is what the Christians said when they came to, to India. Uh, did you know that, brother? Um, all the arguments that Amdis make are the arguments the Christians made, the Christian missionaries made when they came to India and, tr and started trying to convert people. This is what they said. So, uh, so that's where he got that from. 
then uh, Fareed's like, oh, so MGA was a prophet getting divine revelations, but he kept saying that uh, Isa is going to return, uh, etc. And then all of a sudden he says, oh, I just got a revelation that Isa al-Islam was dead, right? And then uh, Fareed didn't get to the point where he said five years later, oh, yeah, he died in India because <laughs> that's just ridiculous. And that is basically the whole thing. Um, let me stop sharing here. Uh, um, sh um, show some additional gotcha photos, and then and then we're out of here. Um, Brother Amir, do you have anything else? Uh, no, brother. Uh, you pretty much uh, summed it up, man. Um, I did listen to the voice call uh, between uh, Farid and uh, you know uh, what's his name? What's his name? Razi. Yes, Razi. Uh, see, it's a common name. I'm still forgetting his name, but my put there. Yeah, yeah, but the but the one that he posted, Razi, is basically you can barely hear Farid what he's saying. Right. right. He purposely made the volume uh, so he could shout over him. Yeah. No, you know what it was? He wasn't using his phone to record. He was using a different uh, source to record. That's what Razi wow. was using, right? Because you can't really hear that person on call, so. For an example, if if you, if I'm talking to somebody on the phone, yo, you need to get rid of that picture, please. <laughs> uh, so I was saying that if, if, if I'm on call with somebody, right, let's just say somebody, and uh, I put them on call with you, I'll just put up, I'll just put on that phone on speaker, and you'll barely hear them. The only person you hear is me, so that's how he did it. He just had a second device which he recorded the call out loud. So that's why I feel right. like people should re 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 people should really listen to the side of uh, Farid where he recorded it. Right. Because it's all it's all you can barely hear Farid, but you can hear a thing. But when you listen to Farid, you hear how how much uh, uh, Razi, he changes the topic. He jumps from one thing to another. He doesn't let Farid talk at all, you know. And, I, and, I, and again, like you said at the beginning, if you were to talk, if you were to do that to somebody normal on the street, they would slap the sh slap beat the hell out of you, brother. Yeah, they would like literally. You know what I mean? You yeah. don't do that. You let the person talk. And then, uh, like I was listening, he's like, "Brother, can I speak? Brother, can I speak? Can I speak? Can I speak? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Like, what is that? <laughs> let let brother for me talk, and then you can talk." Yeah, he was he, um, he was in desperation. I'm surprised he published it, even in the format that he published it. it it's so damaging. It's it's so damaging um, to the Amelia cause. But whatever, th this is what he does. And, 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 you know, someone told me in the past, hey, you need to soften your approach. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. I need to do a lot. Um, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it, look, it doesn't matter if we're nice or if we're mean. They still gave yeah. to give the same response. Um, yeah. We're in a game. With, with, with the Amadea woman, this is a game. You know, these yeah. guys aren't, aren't being serious. You know, the uh, 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 Ibn Arabi reference. Um, so here it is. We pulled it, right? He says in, 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 the, in the latter days, um, a man of Chinese will be born in China who will try to help people uh, doing haram. It won't work. And then the, the final hour will approach. Nothing about the Messiah and the Madi. Nothing. So what is what is MGA talking about? MGA and his team, because remember, uh, MGA doesn't lead the prayer. So uh, uh, um, today is Juma. Did uh, did you know MGA never led a Juma? Yeah, I, I came across that. Not even one. Not even one, bro. Even for like little kids, you know, like look, look. I I, I lead the salat in my house sometimes with my kids. You know what I mean? I don't have. To, I'm not perfect, you know. But I've memorized like the last ten. Um, chapters of the Quran, right? I know Fatih. Yeah. You know, um, and I, you know, giving Jummah is not that hard, bro. You just give a speech and you have to memorize, you know, uh, like what? Guy can't give a Jummah? One? And he lives next door. Yeah. It's not like he's 10 miles away. He's literally next door. And he, he never let a Jummah, huh? Forget Jummah. He never let Salah. How does that happen? Yeah, you're right, brother. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So, so then there's another story. He had a follower named Yar Muhammad, and uh, a Yar Muhammad during Salat used to stroke Mirza Ghulam. How weird is that? This guy's getting stroked. 
So Mirza Ghulam Ahmed would stand on the right of the Imam in the congregation. Have you seen that before? There's no, I haven't seen that, brother. <laughs> no one's ever seen that. There's an Imam, and on the right of the Imam in the Mehrab area, I guess, or in the front area, because sometimes you don't, you don't have a, a – oh, okay, their brother's gone. But um, brothers and sisters, there it is. Gotcha. And and there's the video, 35 minutes explaining what happened. Uh, Fareed responds versus the Ahmadiyya movement. All right. Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, brother. Yeah, no worries. What are we talking about? Uh, I'm not sure. I got disconnected for like two seconds. I'm so sorry. Oh, so, 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 okay. I, oh, I, I was telling you, Mirza Glam Ahmed used to get stroked during Salah. What? A stroke? Like, no, like, like heart stroke? No, like humans touching his body and stroking his body. So it was a big guys. Problem. There was a guy who would jump lines. Have you ever seen a brother jump a line during Salat? I never seen it. No, you know, but, but I'm, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. You don't jump around during Salat. <laughs> so he had a follower named Yar Muhammad, um, who during Salat, he'd be in the third row or something, and he'd jump lines, get up next to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, and stroke his body during Salat. And, and they'd have to restrain him. How weird is that? That's what we're dealing with here. All right. So, uh, so okay, brothers, that, that's that's all I, I I have for y'all today. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and peace out. Thank uh, thank you uh, for having me for the first time. Eh? I really yes, appreciate sir. it. Uh, many more to come, inshallah.